Hi everyone, it's been a little while. Well, by a little while, I mean somewhere between one to two weeks. I'm sorry to dump free lovely videos and then just disappear like that. I've been having a bit of a problem with my throat, but how do I make it up to you? Let's do a Blender Projects video. So yes, you know how this works. This is my community roundup series. So I'm gonna share a few things which have been happening in the Blender community and just share some of my thoughts about them. So in this video, we have some really cool kind of beginner focused tutorials for like rigging, UV unwrapping, geometry nodes and stuff like that. We've also got some really cool sci-fi holographic and experiment experimental stuff. There are some new smaller channels I want to share and some new tools. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to share is this lovely tutorial by Born CG. I may have mentioned them once or twice on the channel before. So they have this series called Let's Learn Blender. It's basically covering a lot of the basics for Blender, a lot of stuff that if you're coming in new to Blender or from other software you'd uh, you'd want to learn how to do. This video in particular is about character rigging and I really liked how this one was explained and the layout of this one. Basically it's a one and a half hour long video explaining when armatures would be appropriate, how to set them up, and the kinds of things to look out for and the tools available when learning to create an armature for a character. So it's using this character model from Lucas de Miguel. And I like it when there's a very nice visually appealing object to use for tutorials because I think it makes it that much more interesting for newcomers. But really more than anything else, the thing which grabbed my attention about this tutorial is just how well explained it is. But it's more than that, it's the way it's narrated. They have a really, really caring way of explaining things. I think that's the way I'd describe it. And I think that newcomers to Blender would resonate with it quite well. See, so yeah, I really like the video. I figure you might find that interesting if you want to learn more about rigging. Taking a quick look at their YouTube channel, you'll be able to see that going back, they have quite a lot of other content in their Let's Learn Blender series. And also they make content for Godot as well. So if you're interested in learning about game development from the open source perspective, then you'll find that interesting as well. So thank you, Born CG. Really nice video. Let's move on. So the next video I want to recommend comes from Jonathan Lampel, one of my favorite tutorial creators who makes content for CG Cookie, so courses and videos on the YouTube channel. Um, they've done this new video called Procedural Modeling with Blender Geometry Nodes, and this is a SIGGRAPH demo. So SIGGRAPH is happening very soon, a couple of days after my recording. SIGGRAPH is like a big graphical tech conference. But anyway, this tutorial in particular is about using geometry nodes to construct a procedural table. So it actually takes you through some really fundamental elements with geometry nodes, so basically how to construct a shape using mathematics, and also constructing curves and learning how to adapt that to the shape of the object because in this case it's actually using a bounding box technique where as you can see you can actually change the fundamental shape of the box and the shape is going to adapt to that. It's a half an hour long video breaking that down all chapter marked as well. I think I will actually still have quite a lot to learn from this as well so thank you for putting this one together Jonathan. I quite like the bounding box idea because it's kind of like building an adaptable asset. I can imagine that being quite useful for like architectural or interior visualization. They also mentioned at the beginning of the video a new company called Orange Turbine which I thought was quite interesting like a new thing under the CG cookie umbrella about like custom add-on development so that might be quite interesting. Orange Turbine is a specialized consulting firm that helps companies of any size and shape integrate the powerful and open source 3D software blender into their production pipeline. Very interesting. CG Cookie have done so much with Blender, it's interesting seeing them expanding in new directions. Next up, we have the Blender Ultimate Hologram Tutorial. That's quite a bold title, I like it. Basically showing how to create holograms in Blender. Now, there are so many different ways to make holograms, but this is the style that they're going for in particular with this video. They'll explain this all at the beginning. Now, I really, really like this one because I think the visual style is great. Let me just show you. The end result will look like this. So you have like a singular point, which kind of throws the light out through a volume and then presents a texture on a flat kind of virtual screen. The actual way to do this using shader nodes is quite interesting. They basically show you how you can plug a texture into a principled volume shader, which I never really thought about doing. So I thought that was quite cool. And that generally gets you that kind of volumetric texture effect, but actually having them collapse down onto a point, that's the bit that's a bit tricky, but it goes further than that. So after explaining the mathematics of how to get that effect to work, they also show you how to do things like stripes in the hologram. So you can give it that more digitized look distortion as well. So you can kind of like disrupt the texture and some extra effects as well like color shifting and visibility. So at the end of it you'll end up with a cool shader which you can use for all kinds of different holographic effects. So well, there's quite a lot of useful information packed into this one. Also taking a look at their channel you can see recently they have also done a new video for using the volume cube which is a new node in geometry nodes to create interesting fractal effects. So the interesting thing about this one is you have always been able to do this using volumes but with the volume cube node it makes it easier to turn this into actual geometry which kind of opens up a whole new world of possibilities in generative modeling. Bad Normals as well has been running their own challenge. The biggest Blender community challenge is here. Um, I did want to talk about this earlier on, but again, I was kind of disrupted by my uh, throat problem. But it's basically a really cool challenge where 
you have to kind of take this basic animation and make something interesting from the cube but the idea being that when all those animations are compiled at the end it's going to make this really cool like phasing animation where we're going to see all the different designs that people have made in the spirit of punishers art challenges which i'm sure many of you already know about unfortunately like i said i'm a bit late talking about this one because the deadline for it is the 13th of august but i figure i might as well tell you about it in case they do other challenges like this in the future you can also join their discord community as well if you want to keep track of what's going on in their corner of the community so thank you for making cool content bad normals keep it up a lot of people are enjoying it all right up next i want to recommend this video by ryan king art again much like born cg i like the way they present their educational content they talk about it very nicely this video in particular is about uv unwrapping for beginners i have recommended other uv unwrapping videos before i think there's one by daniel bystet i tend to link to people but like i've always said i enjoy there being multiple teachers educating people about the same kinds of skill sets because people will resonate with different teachers in different ways so this is a half an hour long video going through all of the basics step by step a really nice Nice beginner tutorial teaching you if you're new to blender how to assign textures to objects how to create uv maps the point of uv maps things to look out for smart uv unwrapping projecting from view adding seams to objects going through a cubic demonstration and a cylindrical demonstration how to rip the faces as well what to keep an eye out for in terms of scale so yeah nice step by step well explained and of course there's other content on the channel as well so thank you ryan next thing coming up we have a tool called screen space ray tracing this one is quite interesting because we've seen screen space global illumination in the form of a tool for EV. But this one in particular is actually coming in the form of a new shader, a new node group, which allows you to get ray tracing like effects. So again, it's all about like kind of bouncing the light around the scene inside of EV. But the way you do it is just by replacing your principal shaders with a new version. Here you can see some complex transparency as well. Uh, there is a video available. Let's take a look at that. So this is from Pedro Lopez or Pedro Lopes. I don't know how to pronounce the names. I'm sorry. But you can see that here in EV as they're rotating around you can see the bounce lighting going on. It's worth experimenting with if you want to kind of try more advanced lighting techniques in EV. The actual link is available either on BlendSwap or on itch.io if you want to give it a try for yourself. The codename for it is SSRT, Screen Space Ray Tracing. So I figured this was an interesting one to share. So let's take a quick look at a comparison. Uh, this is for bounce lighting. So EV, you can see that there is no lighting bouncing around the scene. Then in cycles, because you know it's a much more advanced path tracing engine, we have pretty accurate light bouncing around the scene and also as the white light is hitting the different colors we're getting the different wavelengths coming off there and then finally we have the EV screen space ray tracing version so let's see what happens here immediately we have light coming off and also it's responding to color as well so that's very cool EV itself will be undergoing some improvements in the future I know a lot of creators which are really interested in hearing more about that so we'll have to see what happens there basically this may be redundant in the future I'm not sure but I figured for now if you want to give a try it's available for download next up we have a channel called noggy and the video i want to recommend is the nine levels of blender sculpting so the thing i like about this video is it's basically giving you directions to go if you want to learn sculpting now it's called the nine levels of blender sculpting and it's kind of prepared in a way where they're kind of increasing in difficulty but i don't think that's necessarily true it kind of depends on what kind of stuff you're making but what i liked about this video while watching it is it's kind of giving you like exercises to try if you want to develop those sculpting skills it's actually quite a good source of discussion so for example, some of the things they talk about are hard surface sculpting and techniques you can apply for that, like liquid sculpting, because there are quite a few things to keep in mind with that. Also hair, like different considerations for sculpting hair in like stylized ways or more realistic ways. Anatomy and facial sculpting, because that's quite difficult, you know, and things to keep in mind when taking all of this further. So if you are trying to get into sculpting, if you are looking to develop those skills, then I think you might find this quite interesting, just as like a kind of directional compass. And again, taking a look at their channel, they have quite a lot of anatomy videos videos, different studies and technique discussions. So yeah, thank you Noggy. And on the point about anatomy and sculpting, I want to recommend Aram Torkan. Excuse me if I pronounce that wrong again. So they've got a variety of, again, kind of anatomy focused sculpting videos, but also really good retopology reference material here. I really like this video, Use My Easy Method for Retopology in Blender. They'll basically talk about the different methods, tools, and techniques and theory that they apply when retopologizing their models. So this includes things like the B surfaces add on. Retopology is one of these kind of love it or hate it skill sets. I know a lot of people that hate it and a lot of people that 
like find it kind of therapeutic. So I think it's nice having more and more content available to kind of simplify it and help people discover ways to make it less frustrating. Let's take a look at a comment. As someone who's recently learned and completed a full body retopology of one of my characters, this tutorial is one I wish I had earlier. The tips you shared using your cards was especially helpful and I use them to clean up certain trouble areas of my character's mesh. Thank you, Aaron. So yeah, worth checking out. The next channel I want to give a quick shout out to is a smaller channel, Ali Awada, because they've been doing an episodic short series using Blender. And one of the things I like about this is that they've also been providing some behind the scenes videos of the different episodes in their short series. I'm always encouraged seeing the ambition of different members of the community from different backgrounds, different skill levels, and how they can use Blender to kind of help with their storytelling. It's always nice to see, and I'd like to see more people doing this as well. Also, I get messages from quite a few members of the community that like to show me their short films and projects. Uh, I might show you another one actually just to prove that point. Let me bring up one I got the other day. Italiampex. Let's take a look. So here we go. Italim Italiampex? Italiampex? Italiampex Productions. So they've been doing like these lovely uh, car and automobile short films. These ones are actually quite short, but they look very nice. There's lots of detail in these. But whenever I see community members making shorts like this, I think, what are they going to be like in 10 years, 20 years if they keep up with this? Because sometimes I look at these community members and, you know, like the quality of the shorts is not particularly good, but they are learning but the ambition is there and the ambition is like the really core ingredient for doing this everyone has to start somewhere these ones are actually quite nice quite cinematic but i feel like we should be encouraging people actually there's another one as well while we're at it uh william langren i know that he's been doing quite a few shorts this is another automobile one as well much more cinematic and experimental but i want to see more community members doing this and maybe i'm a bit hypocritical because i haven't really been doing it much we need more short animation content and we need to encourage the people that have the ambition to try that to keep doing it you know there's a lot of time investment that goes into making these projects and they don't always have a particularly good return because it's very hard to market short animation content if you don't already have an audience anyway sorry just a bit of a side thought but on the note of shorts, we're going to step into a bit more of the musical territory. And you may have already seen this, but Savannah XYZ, or Z, depending on what part of the world you're from, has made a lovely tribute to Bo Burnham's Welcome to the Internet by doing their own version. It's an animated musical version called Welcome to 3D Software. I don't want to spoil it, and I'm not going to play the audio. I don't know if I have the right to, but I highly, highly recommend you give it a watch because this blew up so much on Twitter that I think Adobe responded to it. I think Adobe Substance is actually somewhere in the comments. There we go, like Adobe Substance 3D. And also it got picked up by 80 level as well. And I think Andrew Price put it on his recent newsletter. Basically, all I'm saying is give it a watch because it's really funny. I'm sure you're going to love it. And it kind of sums up a lot of our collective experience with 3D artwork and 3D software into one one lovely two. Very well produced, very well animated. Thank you, Savannah. Keep it up. And let's take a look at the channel as well while we're here. So they've got a bunch of shorts on their channel. I wonder if they're going to be doing more of this type of content in the future. I hope so, because it's um, it really seems to have hit a chord with the community. Like people were really responding to it, especially on social media. This Do You Remember one for Blender 2.7 was also really, really good. I saw that one come up on Twitter as well. So yes, that's going to do it for our community roundup video this time. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully that gave you some content to take a look at until we do our next community roundup video. If you enjoyed this, make sure to take a look at some of the other videos available on our channel. You can also consider signing up to my Patreon to get your name put on this evolving piece of artwork. And I just want to give an extra special massive thanks to the patrons because, you know, like I said, over the past week and a bit, I've been kind of struggling with work because I've been having a lot of pain. And one thing which kind of helps to inhibit that anxiety of stopping working for any reason in particular is to have this kind of buffer of support coming in you know also from people who purchase the products as well that's always a massive support especially those who leave donations on the free products you are just like the most wonderful people ever so yeah thank you very much speaking of products take a look i have a new product coming relatively soon if i can get it finished so i'll be excited to show you more about that when it's ready it's a bit of a combination of a new add-on new kind of like startup workflow methodology and a few other things so yeah look forward to that oh and of course the emoji for this video i nearly forgot about that it's been a while Oh, forgive me. Um, if you made it this far through the video, the emoji I want you to put in the comments so I can see who made it this far is going to be a heart because I've missed you. And also it's a way of saying thank you to everyone who's been contributing these lovely tutorials and other projects for the community. But also if you want, alongside the emoji, I would like you to answer a question for me. Has anyone inspired you recently in the Blender community? Have there been any artists whose work you've admired? Any tutorials you've watched that you want to recommend to other people? Anything and everything that's made you feel happy or comforted or that you've learned a lot from? 
I want to know. I want to keep a pulse in the community. I want to know what's been helping you recently. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe. Continue the discussion below and I will see you next time.